And this is Adam and Joe Go Tokyo. We're coming to you from the city with a Robocop on every street corner where hover cars glide silently through the night and evil cyborg replicants stalk the streets in search of human brains. Joe, man, have you been eating the goofy sushi again? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, it's the last show of our current series, but have we got a finale for you? Coming up, all-round entertainment from one of Japan's biggest celebrities, Papaya Suzuki. We get bouncilicious when we go low-riding with Tokyo's homeboys, and we've got music from brilliant, wigged-out electro popsters plus tech squeeze box. But first, let's see what's been the talk of old Tokyo town this week. It's the Go Tokyo update. Me 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 me. I've got some unusual ice cream in this box here, Joe. Prawn flavour, <laughs> chicken flavour, octopus flavour, and there's the ox tongue flavour. Mm. They are genuine ice creams which are easily available anywhere. I haven't actually tasted them yet because I've been saving them for the moment when you would eat them. Because this Ooh, is... Oh, that just tastes like, like off yoghurt. It tastes like kind of very rich vanilla to me. Maybe the genius of the thing is they've taken animals that in reality taste a little bit of vanilla or chocolate sprinkles. I'm going to try the prawn. I'm not even going to go into the shrimp bucket. Oh, put that in your gob. No. Add. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Into the tunnel. Fruity, fruity. Oh, mmm. It went in cold and it tasted tutti frutti and then it, it kind of thawed and turned in back into shrimp. Come on, it's okay. Swallow. Don't have a tantrum. What I want to know is exactly where in the meal these ice creams fit. Are they like dessert? Or are they for the main course? Or are they an appetizer? Where would you put them in a meal, Adam? In the bin. <laughs> in the bin. Joe, I've got a letter here from Tina Smoles who wants to know if you've got any exciting news about Japanese film. Well, Tina, thanks for writing in. There is movie news. Here's my picks of the most exciting films that are coming up. Start! If you thought British schools were in a mess, check out The School in Blue Spring, where teachers cower in fear, gangs and graffiti rule the classrooms, and the Yakuza recruit right outside the gates. Directed by former child chess prodigy Toshiaki Toyoda, Blue Spring has been a huge hit in Japan and makes British delinquent school kids look, well, really badly styled. If you're a fan of sci-fi manga, or if you like watching highly detailed computer animated tanks blowing up cathedrals, then feast your eyes on this. It's an exclusive clip from the forthcoming big budget movie Appleseed, which uses an innovative mix of CGI, live action and hand animation to achieve these tank-tacular, explodocious effects. Finally, if it's a dribbling minotaur wearing Y-fronts, it must be another film from Takashi Miike, the insanely prolific and prolifically insane director of Audition and Itchy the Killer. His latest release, Gozu, tells what happens when a high-ranking Yakuza member starts going mad. We should point out that the cow-tonguing that you're about to see is actually in his dreams. This is not a film about a man having an affair with a minotaur, although that'd probably be pretty good too. Gozu isn't due for release in the UK until next year, but if what you've seen excites you, just rub jam on your face and head for your nearest dairy farm. Fitness news now, and we saw this product in the paper this week and felt that we simply had to give it a try. It's the EU 6430 horse riding exercise machine from Matsushita. And, uh... It's all oh, steady. Oh, Joe, you've put it very high. I have, very, Adam. Very high setting. I'm testing you to the limit. The great thing about this machine is it's the world's only exercise machine that requires zero effort. All you have to do is sit and look as if you're being rogered by a horse. I'm going to puke. 
Let's have a look at the promotional video for the Joba. Basically, all they need to say is married to a very boring man who doesn't love you anymore, alone in the house for a long period of time every day. And get rid of that old washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't just exercising, there was something else going on there. Well, oh, you look really sexy. Thanks, man. Now, here's a quick roundup of some of the music and videos that have caught our eyes and ears this week. Marvellous. <laughs> Cornelius is the unrivaled king of Japan's alternative music scene, and this is a track from his new DVD, 5.1, which contains promos and some of the amazing visuals that he uses for his live shows. Whoa, what the hell's going on? It's okay, you haven't been sucked into the Matrix. This is the video for Ibitsu by Boris, who call themselves a mysterious, versatile, heavy rock band. The video's a bit like Transformers on acid, isn't it? I thought of that all on my own. This is Swerd. He's one of Tokyo's finest hip-hop MCs, and this is his powerful and unique version of the Beastie Boys classic, Might Be A Right To Party, which spent five weeks on the Japanese charts earlier this summer. I'll tell you one thing, next time I have a party, I'm not inviting Swerd. My mum won't let me. Eight weeks ago, we started the titanic struggle to make it big in Japan. But this week, it seems it all finally paid off. We got a call from one of Japan's biggest TV music shows, BBL World. They'd heard about the band we'd formed called Gaijin and Vision, and they invited us onto the show to be special guests. Space Shower is Japan's biggest music channel, and BBL World is its top-rated evening music show. Tonight, Gaijin Invasion are going to make their Japanese television debut playing live. First, we meet the show's producer, Koga. How did you find out about Gaijin Invasion? You know, this could well turn out to be a very historic piece of footage now, you know, and what we're going to shoot tonight could be seen like the Beatles on Ed Sullivan in years to come. Are you excited about being a part of history? I'm sorry, but Koga-san is laughing, and this is like, you know, talking to Keith Harris and Orville before their first Top of the Pops. Oh, yeah, or Ant and Dec circa You Crazy Cats. Take it seriously. <laughs> now, there's no going back. The show's beginning. Gaijin Invasion, Gaijin Invasion, Gaijin Invasion, go! Gaijin Invasion's make or break moment is only seconds away. Uh... We're just about to go on. We're both pretty nervous, nervous, Ed? Yeah, very. Other two guests on the show so far have been a schoolgirl on a unicycle and a paper bag, so there's quite a lot to beat. Yeah, the schoolgirl on the unicycle was particularly good, actually. Paper bag was pretty good, too. I think it had something, you know, interesting written on it. Not sure. For those about to rock, we salute you.
much, Well, thank you very much for that. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, you finally made it on a Japanese music television show. <laughs> well, not just any Japanese music mm -hmm. television show, THE show. THE show. Yeah, well, tell us a little bit about the song that you came up with here, then. Well, the song basically includes most of the Japanese that we actually know, which isn't very much. <laughs> and uh, is there a message behind the song? Just that we love Tokyo mm. and we want people to love us. Mm. Brian, can we ask you a question? Mm. What did you think of our song, sincerely? Do you think ah. we stand a chance? She says she likes the tempo behind it. <laughs> But listen, thanks very much for having us, though. We really appreciate it. Hey, guys, you're in the air. Thank you. 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 History has been written. And as Gaijin Invasion leave the studio, Japanese hip hop outfit Fireball prepare for their turn in front of the cameras. Hey, hey, hey Gaijin Invasion. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. How'd you like it? Yeah, it sounded good, yo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much. Yeah. What are you guys playing today? What? Um, we're talking on, on with um, Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. Oh, you're not playing? Yeah, we're not going to play. It's like this. You're five. Ready? Yeah. Boom! Getting in high, lowly tokoro kamawatsu, we got the finest of us, bus mawasu, ya wanna tie, no janai, my crew, kimeru tokyo, kimeru ze high grade. Well, I've been a lot of places in this big old world, but I've never seen a place like this. Bill was kind of tall and the kind of small, and everybody ate a lot of fish. Yeah. Ooh, that was embarrassing. <laughs> they weren't very good. Not as good as us. They can't sing. They can't sing. Oh, that's a shame. It's the end of our odyssey, Ad. Eight weeks we've tried to get famous, we've done everything we possibly could, but it goes to show it's not as easy as it looks, huh? If one of us was to become a lady, and then the other one went out with that lady, that would help. We're just too boring, aren't we? Yes. Here in Japan, they've got a special word for washed-up middle-aged guys who aren't much use to anyone. In England, the term is Henry Kelly. But in Japan, it's Oyaji. Our next guest, Papaya Suzuki, turned his Oyaji status into celebrity gold by forming a dance troupe comprised variously of middle-aged and overweight men. He's got his own TV show and regularly performs to sell-out audiences across the country, making him a perfect antidote to Japan's squeaky-clean teenage boy bands. Papaya Suzuki and his Oyaji dancers are amongst the nation's best-loved entertainers. So we're very excited to have Papaya here with us tonight. Welcome, Papaya Suzuki-san. Konbawa. You rose to fame with the Oyaji dancers. Can you explain how you came up with that idea? Oyaji-という言葉すごくいい言葉だったんですね。で、そのオヤジっていう言葉がいつしかね、悪い意味になっちゃった。で、その時にその僕はそのオヤジという言葉をよくしたい。それで普段は元気のないお父さんたちがオ
In Japan, the culture of cuteness is everywhere. The Japanese word for cute is kawaii, and you rarely go a day in Tokyo without coming across extreme cuteness in one form or another. So this week, we thought we'd bring you our top five kawaii items, our kawaii 5-0. Kawaii! At number five are Ocha. These are very popular toys at the moment. They're terribly, terribly cute little collectible dogs. They make little noises, and then when you press their noses... Ah. What am I doing? <laughs> they uh, lick your face. My tongue just went straight in there. Well, <laughs> you're turning into Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, I've been alone for ten weeks. So your dog is called Cafe uh, for coffee because it's got sort of dreadlocks made of coffee beans. Yeah, he's a coffee dog. He loves his coffee. Joe's has got green tea leaf ears. You can get a herb tea dog, uh, a kind tea. I didn't know you could have kind tea. Can you get a Mr. Tea? You can't get a Mr. T, no. I ain't looking your face, fool. That would be good. <laughs> Kawaii item number four are these little toy chicks. They're called Yubenori Pippi, which translates literally as on your finger bird. Oh, oh. it's a tiny birdie. Kawaii. But things get sweeter when you pluck the little birds out of their egg. Rest it on your palm and they've got little sensors that when they connect through your flesh, make little tweety sounds. I think mine's dead. <laughs> hold, your, hold your palm flat, flat, flat. Hold your palm flat. It's going crazy. <laughs> Taste the chicken. At number three in our Kawaii Five O are Nikki, Naki, and Doki Chin, the three petulant little robotic babies. And if I activate them, you'll see why they're sweet little suckers. You know what? I actually like these less than the chicks. Come on, these are Kawaii. Look I at their faces. Okay, yeah. The nice thing about these as well is they come from a whole little world of angry little babies. They've got excerpts from their diaries on the box. Isn't there an excerpt there? There is. It's extraordinary. <laughs> what does it say? It's written by Noki, and it says, Oh, yeah, the other day I tried to capture a cicada, but I couldn't quite do it, and instead it pissed on me. Maybe it just couldn't make it to the toilet. Where does a cicada go to the toilet? So many questions when you're young and plastic. <laughs> Kawaii item number two this week is Panda Z. It's totally non-automated. It does nothing at all. It's purely decorative. But if you look closely, you'll observe that it's a giant robot panda with a tiny little panda in its head operating it from its brain. To me, if Kawaii was a nation state and it was attacked by things that weren't Kawaii, this is what it would send out in its defense. Do you not like it at all, Adam? Do no, you I, think I... it's Kawaii? Yeah, that is Kawaii. But again, it, you know, I just think stuff like this is kind of our generation's equivalent of the porcelain dogs that our grandmothers used to collect and stick on their mantelpiece, you know? Yeah, but if little porcelain dogs had heads that flipped open and even smaller porcelain dogs operating their <laughs> brains, then we'd think our grannies were cool, surely. <laughs> and at number one in the Kawaii Five-O are the Ibo dogs from Sony. Pretty soon, they will wake up and astound you with their extraordinary... Quiosity. They've got... Oh! oh! Sentience, armed, ready to destroy. You no. know, that's kawaii, but that's also slightly sinister, the way they come to life. Do they serve any practical purpose whatsoever? Yes. What? They uh, serve a secret government program to monitor people with too much money. Well, how much do they cost? 
uh, they cost about £425. Now, I'm going to try some simple commands to latte here. You've got some Japanese ones, have you? Yep, starting with sit. Did it before I even asked it. Amazing <laughs> technology here in Japan. Um, here's uh, how you make it walk. Arute, arute, arute. Something like that. He's walking. Don't do it! He arouted right off the table. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Flip him over onto his back. See if we can get out of that. Come on there, boy. See if you can flip yourself over Sorry. for daddy. That's impressive. And the Ibos are conclusively number one in this week's Kawaii 5 0. Haruite! Haruite! Tokyo Kids are dedicated importers of pop culture from all over the world. At the moment, hip hop and RB culture is king. Everything's getting the flavor. From clothes to music to even cars, those low slung ghetto cruisers they call low riders are absolutely everywhere. Yo, 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 I'd be in the house with my man JC. <laughs> We're here in Chiba, two hours outside of Tokyo, to hang out with Japan's hip hop fraternity at a low riding convention. And of course, we're doing our best to blend in. Look like some of the homeboys in the house. Hey, bounce it, my man. Woo, nice. Black fools, cause I smack fools. Trying to set me up. It's hard to tell quite how authentic this hip hop scene is because there's no ghetto in Japan, as far as we know, and there's no class system, really. So at the moment, we think that they might think that we are real rappers from London. We're not sure whether they know that we're just a couple of ponces. Yeah, it's, it's typical. It's basically what happens when fake east meets fake west <laughs> in a kind of fake explosion. Log, log, yeah, yeah. My dog did My! These cars can cost upwards of £25,000, and we wondered what kind of kids can afford that. So we spoke to Uki san, the event organizer. Give me a description of the average lowrider. Are these your jumpy switches down here? Yeah. Can you demonstrate? Hey. Oh, oh sexy. <laughs> ah, oh, hey. oh, I feel a bit naughty now. Oh. <laughs> now it's time for the big bounce off. Every single Boeing will be measured to see exactly how high the competitors can raise the roof or the bonnet. That was good bouncing. Set a high standard, 40 inches. He just can't get the height today. The big purple Chevy getting up to 41 inches there. An amazing result for such a big car. <laughs> so this next competitor actually runs a hydraulics company. This guy's not even messing around with the hip-hop gear or anything like that. He's here to win. 52, 55, 56, 57, 60. What yeah. a bounce! Up to 60 inches! Amazing! The winner, Kobayashi-san, has kindly agreed to let us experience the bounce firsthand inside his record-breaking truck. We're not going to bounce too hard, are we, Joe? I don't know, man. Let's just hold tight. Judging by the state of the windscreen, this could be life-threatening. Let's bounce! Whoa, 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 whoa. Delicious. Oh man, I didn't think I was going to chicken out, but I was worried my back was going to break. <laughs> that was intense. <laughs> how, how high did we go? When this mother goes up to 70, imagine that. No, I don't want to imagine that. Well, I must say, today was a good day. I didn't even have to use my AK. Home jizzle and don't spare the hizzle. Peace. Yeah. We out.
Tonight we're delighted to be joined by a very Japanese band indeed, Plus Tech Squeeze Box, who are going to be rounding off the series for us. Their sound is a genre-busting mix of pop, hip-hop, rock, lounge, jazz, skiffle, ragtime and gabba, and the sound of a huge sentinel robot whose arms have just become guns and is blasting you into a thousand pieces. Wow, that's kind of like a crazy picture of Tokyo itself. Mm. They're going to be playing a song called Early Riser for us, which comes from their debut album Fake Vox. And they'll be accompanied by the industrial groovements of the Grinder men. So hold on to your beanies and get ready for a white knuckle sample ride. Thanks a lot for watching. Thank you, Tokyo. And take it away, guys. <laughs> Tutti frutti. Oh, mmm. It went in cold and it tasted tutti frutti and then it, it kind of thawed and turned in back into shrimp. Come on, it's okay. Swallow. Don't have a tantrum. What I want to know is exactly where in the meal these ice creams fit. Are they like dessert? Or are they for the main course? Or are they an appetizer? Where would you put them in a meal, Adam? In the bin. <laughs> in the bin. Joe, I've got a letter here from Tina Smoles who wants to know if you've got any exciting news about Japanese film. Well, Tina, thanks for writing in. There is movie news. Here's my picks of the most exciting films that are coming up. Starts! If you thought British school... Home boys, and we've got music from brilliant, wigged-out, electro popsters Plus Tech Squeeze Box. But first, let's see what's been the talk of old Tokyo Town this week. It's the Go Tokyo update. Me, 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 me. Beep. I've got some unusual ice cream in this box here, Joe. <laughs> Prawn flavour, <laughs> chicken flavour, octopus flavour, and there's the... Ox tongue flavour. Mm. They are genuine ice creams which are easily available anywhere. I haven't actually tasted them yet because I've been saving them for the moment when you would eat them. Because this Ooh, is. Oh, that just tastes like, like off yogurt. It tastes like kind of very rich vanilla to me. Maybe the genius of the thing is they've taken animals that in reality taste a little bit of vanilla or chocolate sprinkles. I'm going to try the prawn. I'm not even going to go into the shrimp bucket. Oh. Put that in your gob. No. Add. Pops when a high-ranking Yakuza member starts going mad. 
We should point out that the cow tonguing that you're about to see is actually in his dreams. This is not a film about a man having an affair with a minotaur, although that'd probably be pretty good too. Gozu isn't due for release in the UK until next year, but if what you've seen excites you, just rub jam on your face and head for your nearest dairy farm. Fitness news now, and we saw this product in the paper this week and felt that we simply had to give it a try. It's the EU 6430 horse riding exercise machine from Matsushita. And uh, it's all oh, steady. Oh, Joe, you've put it very high. I have, very, Adam. Very high setting. I'm testing you to the limit. The great thing about this machine is it's the world's only exercise machine that requires zero effort. All you have to do is sit and look as if you're being rogered by a horse. I'm gonna puke. Let's have a look at the promotional video for the Joba. <laughs> look, it's Gareth Gates. Where? Oh. Adam this. And this is Adam and Joe Go Tokyo. We're coming to you from the city with a Robocop on every street corner where hover cars glide silently through the night and evil cyborg replicants stalk the streets in search of human brains. Joe, man, have you been eating the goofy sushi again? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, it's the last show of our current series, but have we got a finale for you? Coming up, all-round entertainment from one of Japan's biggest celebrities, Papaya Suzuki. We get bouncilicious when we go low-riding with Tokyo's hubs. We're in a mess. Check out the school in Blue Spring, where teachers cower in fear, gangs and graffiti rule the classrooms, and the Yakuza recruit right outside the gates. Directed by former child chess prodigy Toshiaki Toyoda, Blue Spring has been a huge hit in Japan and makes British delinquent school kids look, well, really badly styled. <laughs> If you're a fan of sci-fi manga, or if you like watching highly detailed computer animated tanks blowing up cathedrals, then feast your eyes on this. It's an exclusive clip from the forthcoming big budget movie Appleseed, which uses an innovative mix of CGI, live action and hand animation to achieve these tanktacular, explodocious effects. Finally, if it's a dribbling minotaur wearing Y-fronts, it must be another film from Takashi Miike, the insanely prolific and prolifically insane director of Audition and Ichi the Killer. His latest release, Gozu, tells what happened.